Hello, my name is Nadezhda Kim. I'm Korean, born and raised in Russia, and today I will be talking on behalf of Russian Federation on the issue of reunification between North Korea and South Korea and what influence it might bring to Russia. Undoubtedly, after the 2018 talks in Singapore, people's attention around the globe was riveted to the Korean Peninsula. North Korean Chairman Kim Jong-un and President Donald Trump held the first ever meeting between North Korea and the United States. According to scholars, the talk's outcome was fruitful as both sides conducted a comprehensive, sincere meeting aiming at the issues related to the establishment of new US-DPRK relations, denuclearization of the peninsula, and of course, joint work towards a robust peace in the region. Everyone was looking forward to the next possibly successful summit in Vietnam in 2019, but the high expectations were not realized. The Vietnam summit was not as prosperous as the Singapore summit. All hopes collapsed when the White House announced that the talks had to abruptly end due to North Korea's request to end all sanctions, and eventually no agreement was reached. For the past year, people have been wondering whether another summit would be happening anytime soon. However, with the recent events happening on the Korean Peninsula and in the United States, it is highly questionable whether Kim Jong-un would be willing to go for another round of talks. As all of you might know, in June 2020, the media was struck by the news that North Korea had blown up a joint liaison office used for talks between itself and the South after a group of defectors used balloons to send anti-North Korean leaflets. Moreover, in recent days, the news claimed that Kim Jong-un turned away Trump's determination for another suggestion to meet, showing the sign that ties between their nations are rapidly deteriorating. Nevertheless, the reality of a future reunification remains constant, and the Russian Federation will play an important role in the process as one of North Korea's closest allies. In general, Russia holds a positive stance towards the reunification issue. I would like to emphasize that Russia's and South Korea's stances are very similar in approaching the peninsula's peace process and resolving the North Korean nuclear issue, said Russia's ambassador to South Korea, Andrei Kulik, during the meeting with the unification minister, Kim yong chol Before diving into Russian people's public opinion on the Korean issue and possible influence of the reunification on Russia, it is logical to analyze Russia's relations with the South and the North. This year, Russia and South Korea will celebrate the 30th year of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries. In recent years, South Korean President Moon Jae-in paid a state visit to Russia and became the first South Korean president to give a speech in the Russian parliament. President Vladimir Putin and Moon Jae-in signed a document for the Free Trade Areas Foundation during the South Korean leaders' visit in 2018. The leadership in Moscow sees South Korea as one of the biggest economic partners and investors, especially for the Russian Far East, as it is the seventh largest trade partner of Russia. South Korea and Russia are also participants in the six-party talks on the peaceful resolution of the North Korean nuclear weapons program. Russia is also ethnically tied to the Korean Peninsula as approximately 400,000 to 500,000 Kodosarum reside in the former USSR countries. Countries like Uzbekistan, Russia, and Kazakhstan count the largest number of Kodo people. As for the North, Russia and North Korea in 2020 will celebrate the 72nd anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two nations. North Korea was always considered Russia's closest ally and partner. However, in recent years, we can witness more and more disagreements between the two countries. In 2016, after another North Korean nuclear test, Russia supported the UN Security Council resolution on further sanctions against North Korea. In the same year, the Central Bank of Russia demanded from all Russian banks to stop financial dealings with North Korean organizations that were on the UN sanctions list. Moreover, Russia lost its position as North Korean largest trade partner to China, as China ranks the number one North Korean trade partner in 2018 with the $2.43 billion, while Russia North Korean trade totaled only $34 million, 56% decrease from 2017. In 2019, Kim Jong-un met with Russian President Vladimir Putin to discuss the previous talks with the United States and further Russian-North Korean relations. Many scholars have regarded the Vladivostok summit as anticlimactic without major changes or developments. In general, Russia and the Korean Peninsula are neighboring countries, and this is a substantial factor in Russian stance towards two Koreas. Russia is sincerely interested in peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula, and one possible way of reaching the goal is the Korean unification. 
which may in the long run eliminate the source of conflict that has been existing on the peninsula for the past 70 years. The Russian public opinion towards the reunification issue does not have a significant gap between the older and younger generations. That can be explained by the fact that the Russian population is not directly involved in the process. Our public opinion is only based on the country's national interest. If this reunification brings more advantages than disadvantages, no matter the age, people usually have positive thoughts towards the issue. Moscow's position regarding inter-Korean rapprochement and its possible results is determined by the national interest of Russia, which of course is responsible for the elimination of the hotbed of tension near the far eastern borders of Russia and the emergence of the United Korea in the future, ready to maintain relations of good neighborliness and cooperation with Russia. The continuing high degree of uncertainty regarding the nature of the foreign policy of the future United Korean state, its participation in military political alliance with other countries, and the direction of such alliance forces Russia to be cautious about the prospects for unification. Russia is unlikely to be satisfied with the emergence as a neighbor of a United Korea with a population of 75 million people, which is under the predominant influence of the United States, and especially with American troops and components of the U.S. global missile defense system on its territory. Given U.S. efforts to create a U.S.-Japan-South Korean military political alliance in the region, this would be tantamount to the emergence of an Asian clone of NATO on our eastern borders. Russia never sought to gain a dominant influence in Korea, but tried to prevent a situation where all of Korea would be influenced by one unfriendly Russia state. In light of these factors, the DPRK's proposals for the creation of neutral, non-aligned state in Korea look more attractive than the commitment of some circles in Seoul, advocating the preservation of the American military presence in peninsula, even after the unification of Korea. The further rapprochement of the two parts of Korea and the improvement of relations between them are extremely important for Russia and frankly beneficial for two reasons. First, Russia is certainly interested in eliminating a hotbed of tension right at its far eastern borders, which was largely generated and fueled by the abnormal state of inter-Korean relations. Secondly, history has shown that the ups and downs in inter-Korean relations, the spurts of tension on and around the peninsula, have become a serious obstacle to implementing a number of multilateral economic projects in which Russia and two Korean states are objectively interested. First of all, it is about creating a single railway line across the entire Korean peninsula with access to the Trans-Siberian Railway, laying pipelines and power lines from Russia to the Republic of Korea through the territory of the DPRK, and about implementing other economic projects in the regions of Siberia and the Far East involving South Korean technologies and North Korean worker strength. The implementation of these projects is very important for Russia since it was largely associated with plans for further socio-economic development of the Russian Far East and its integration into the Asia-Pacific region's economic space. It turned out that given the level of confrontation that has existed on the peninsula for the last decade, even political agreements repeatedly confirmed at the highest level do not work in this regard, and numerous memorandums of intent remain only on paper. On the other hand, worldwide support for the sanctions regime and its strengthening does not meet Russia's economic or strategic interests. This alienates the North Korean leadership from Russia without bringing real dividends, except for some mythical approval from the United States, which is still impossible to monetize or use in any other way because the contradictions in other areas are too great. Another interesting point to consider is whether the reunification will happen in a peaceful or coercive manner. In recent years, the use of root military force to solve long-term disputes has gained popularity. Scholars argue that the key determining factor of the kind of reunification the two Koreals will have is North Korea's ability or disability to transform into a more or less modern state. Both the young and old generation of Russia are concerned that another war is inevitable because of the great political and economic differences between the two neighboring states. As mentioned above, Russia, because of its geographical proximity with the region and economic ties, gains great advantages if there is peace and prosperity on the Korean peninsula, and the last thing it would want to see is the outbreak of another war. As of today, people in Russia do not show much concern about the reunification issue on the Korean peninsula. It might be because they think that reunification is not going to happen anytime soon. 
Generally speaking, the current situation of neither war nor peace is the most favorable for Russia. Sluggish negotiations are ongoing, there are no crises, no nuclear missile tests, no military maneuvers, and the emergence of new strategic assets for the United States in the region. And in such a situation, taking into account a sober assessment that its solution, if it can be, is only gradual, we must show the greatest flexibility so it is ultimately resolved.